In the world of Jutsu Kaisen, there's many different tools and items that people have used in conjunction with Cursed Energies to get the job done. Although I personally feel like the Cursed Energy tools in the series were pretty underused and should have been way more prevalent than they really were, there are two that definitely stand out and have seen most of the screen time in the series, and that's definitely going to be the Playful Cloud and the Inverted Spear of Heaven. In this video, I'm going to go over both of them and kind of give the basic rundown of their abilities, the previous users, and where they currently are in the series right now. If you do end up enjoying anything you see here today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as it really does help me out and I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys for sticking around and watching the video. Thank you. We're going to start off with one of the first of the major curse tools that we were shown in the series and kind of gave us a big introduction into what they were meant for and kind of what they stood for and that's definitely going to be the Playful Cloud. Uh, the look of the Playful Cloud is that it's a red three section staff that is secured together with a chain connecting these sections together along with a kind of small ring in between these chains. It also sports a kind of blue flame like marking near the end of each of the shafts of the Playful Cloud and all in all it's just a very cool design in my opinion. The abilities of the Playful Cloud though are pretty vague and kind of looking around the community and different search groups, things, different things I was kind of seeing, it seems like a lot of people aren't really sure as to whether or not it has cursed energy or if it doesn't, so I'm going to kind of give my explanation of what I kind of feel like is going on right now with the Playful Cloud. It's pretty simple though, the Playful Cloud's main ability is to amplify the user's strength that is using it to titanic levels and dish out as much damage as possible. You know, there's kind of no playing around, there's no joking around with the ability, it's just, you know, you got big damage, you're going to do even more damage if you're already kind of big yourself, so that's just the basic ability of the Playful Cloud. I have noticed though in the community, a lot of people confuse the idea that it has no cursed energy with the fact that it has no cursed technique. It kind of seems like it does have an, a imbued cursed energy inside of it, but it doesn't have a sort of technique per se, other than obviously that amplification of the user's strength, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have cursed energy or that you can't channel your cursed energy through it. It just doesn't necessarily have an innate technique such as, you know, you know, bypassing other techniques or, you know, something like that or something in it. It just gives you extra strength, which I guess is technically a technique, quote unquote, but you do see what I say and I digress. As I've been saying previously though, its unique ability is the idea that it will amplify the person using it, their strength immensely, and obviously if you are more physically gifted than others, you're going to benefit from this even more. I kind of want to think about it as a multiplier. If your base is already 100 and it multiplies your strength by 100, you're obviously going to be stronger than a person that has a base of maybe 20 strength and that's multiplied by 100. So if you're already somebody physically gifted, very, very strong, you're going to benefit from this way, way more than somebody that maybe has a, a good technique, a good terse technique, but they're not physically as strong as you. So you're going to benefit from it way more than the other person would. And of course, going by that logic, it's for that same reason we see that two of the Heavenly Restriction users in the series, of course, Maki and Toji, are seen very much using this weapon at the, you know, the best of the best at its full capacity. And this is obvious, you know, they're very physically gifted people. Their Heavenly Restriction gives them that ability. So they're going to be people that benefit the most from using Playful Cloud. And obviously in the series, we have seen them both dominate enemies with it, do the most, especially Toji, but we're, we're going to kind of get into that. But it obviously makes complete sense that these two in specific are going to make the best use out of the playful cloud in the series. Of course, people do sleep on OG Ghetto from the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie. Obviously, that dude is still physically very strong. You know, he's still a special grade. Yes, his ability isn't necessarily physical based, but he, he's still special grade. He's not somebody that's very weak or somebody that can be played around with, and that's why he made very good use of the playful cloud also. Of course though, this is definitely the curse tool that we've seen the most in the series, and as I said before, Toji made the best use of it during his time with the weapon, using it to completely dismantle a special grade in Dagon without really putting too much effort into it, he really did make it look easy, and that was a brutal fight in the series, one of the most brutal moments you're ever going to see, and you know, that was all Toji using this weapon, so that fight really showed off why the weapon is, you know, to be considered special grade and how dangerous it is in the hands of the right person. Somebody that fits the physical qualifications for the weapon will make the best best use of it and it isn't something to be scoffed at. With that being said though, I'm going to kind of give a quick rundown of all of the different users that have used the weapon before and that consists of Toji, Maki, Toto, and Megami respectively. Even though he wasn't really near as good as using it as basically everybody else in the series that has used it and I forgot to mention Ghetto, but you know he did kind of make good use of it. He's still a very strong person but you can obviously see why he didn't really want to use it and why he said that he felt kind of uncomfortable wielding it. Right now in the story though, the blade 
Blade's whereabouts are completely unknown and we kind of don't know what happened to it after the Shibuya incident where, you know, Toji definitely used it to do something unspeakable to Dagon, but it is also worth noting that Choji did break off the chains that were connecting the staff together just before he defeated Dagon, so it just might be gone for good or maybe it'll just be kind of like a big pile of sticks now, but we just don't know what's happened to it and it, it technically is broken. Of course, though, we can now talk about the Inverted Spear of Heaven and this weapon is just so iconic. A lot of people remember this weapon and this is the weapon that Toji used to completely disrespect Gojo until Gojo did get his get back. It's also worth noting that this weapon is technically, at least how it was used in the series, two special grade items put together as when Toji did use it in conjunction with the Chain of a Thousand Miles to give it an even bigger edge in combat. The weapon itself though is a dagger-like blade which happens to be spear shaped although one of the sides of it has been broken off so it kind of looks more like a dagger of course and it does have a kind of rectangular shaped handguard that sticks out slightly on one of these sides along with jet black leather that wraps around the handle and the grip. It does also sport a sort of circular link at the bottom as if it was perfectly designed for somebody to add a chain onto it so this obviously does kind of help it with the fact that it was used in conjunction with the chain of a thousand miles. And we're actually going to start off just real quick giving a basic rundown of the chain of a thousand miles and it's pretty simple how it works. The chain can extend infinitely with no kind of set limit to how long it can get as long as one of the ends of the chain is invisible to others and Toji uses this brilliantly in the story by putting the chain inside of the mouth of the kind of bottomless stomach cursed spirit that he carries around so this lets him infinitely stretch out the chain as long as he wants to since nobody's able to see the chain since it's inside of the mouth of the cursed spirit so he can just keep making it as long as he wants to and it was just a brilliant use of the chain and Toji's very smart for figuring this out. Back to the spear though, its ability is the force deactivation of any cursed ability that it comes in contact with. This ability is made possible by what is described as a foreign cursed energy that allows for this kind of cursed energy to be able to block out any other technique and this is very similar to the black rope that Gojo did encounter from Miguel. It could possibly allude to these two things being made in the same continent which is the African continent. The ability to stop any cursed technique is obviously a reason enough for this to be special grade and there seems to be no limit to as far as what it can stop as it was able to stop Gojo's Limitless which is an extremely high leveled cursed technique that was thought to be infallible at, at the time. It was also said by Tengen herself that it had the ability to even open up the prison realm which is a completely closed off space and was thought to be unbreakable so the fact that it can even bypass a closed off space that technically doesn't really exist in their world is very insane. The blade itself is very powerful but it of course really shines when it's used by somebody that's physically gifted or very good with hand to hand combat in the series and it's for that reason that Toji is the most adept at using it by completely blindsiding Gojo in their first fight and dismantling him very brutally violently just the way that he was able to take down Gojo with this was, was insane. The addition of the Chain of a Thousand Miles turns a short range monster weapon into an even deadlier long range option that even in the second fight that Toji and Gojo did have, it still kind of forced Gojo to start to float up in the air and use his hollow purple at range because I do personally feel that even though Gojo was technically at an awakened state and he was stronger than in their first fight, if he were to stand there and try to trade in the pocket with Toji, I don't think it would have been very easy for him in that fight so he did kind of feel a little bit forced to go up into the air and use a long range option and use an that Toji had no idea he could use. The only known users of both the Chain of a Thousand Miles and the Spear of Heaven are Toji Zenin and of course he is the most adept at using these to an almost scary degree. The whereabouts of the Inverted Spear of Heaven are currently unknown and Tengen does suspect that Gojo either hid it somewhere overseas or destroyed it himself although I do hope that we do get to see it at some point in the series before it ends because it's just such an iconic weapon and some things are so special I, I do want to see it at least one more time before we end off the manga. With that being said though this was a full breakdown of both the Inverted Spear of Heaven and the Playful Cloud. And if you enjoyed anything you see here today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as it really does mean a lot to me and I appreciate each and every one of you guys for even making it to the end of this video. With that being said though, I'm out. Peace.